How to enable the inter-VLAN communication? Actually, there are three different kinds. For first one is that we can use the router's physical interface. The router really have two interfaces connected with two cable using two cables to different interfaces in the switch, for example. So they have the physical interface. Another method is that in physical layer, we only have one interface, but we separate them into several sub-interfaces to implement the inter-VLAN communication. And the second method actually is to use the VLAN interface in the layer 3 switch to, to do the inter-VLAN communication. So here we will first introduce the physical interface inter-VLAN communication. Okay, so how to do the layer 3 communication using a router's physical interface. Actually, the network topology will be like this. We have two different VLANs, and we use the switch to communicate, uh, to connect it with the uh, VLANs, the PCs in the VLANs. And then all the packets should be go up to the layer 3 device. So we assume that there is a router here. And in this router, we have two different physical interfaces. One is connected to the interface of one interface of the switch. Another one connected with another interface of the switch. We can allocate the interface and VLAN into each interface. Now let's look at how to transmit the packet. Actually here, figure the, this interface as the access type and we only allow the VLAN 10 packet to access. And then this outgoing interface are also the access type, which allow only VLAN 10. And uh, this is connected to the interface one of the router. By configure the default gateway of this PC1 to be the interface of one of the R router, then the packets from PC1 will by default be forwarded by this switch to the interface of the router. So it, it has arrived here. And then the router can look up its uh, routing table to check if this router needs to forward the packet destined to the PC2, which uh, outgoing interface this should be forwarded to. Then it checks that, okay, this one should be forwarded from the interface 2. So the packet is transmitted here. And then when the packet arrived to the switch 1, they find that, okay, it is for the VLAN 20. And then they are transmitted out and until the PC2. To the tag of the packet, actually when the packet from this PC, they have no tag, right? And then uh, when they go into the switch, they will have a tag. And when they go out from this interface, it still has no tag, right? And then because there is no tag, so they can be transmitted through this cable until the interface of the switch one. And here, and within the in switch one, they have the in tag in it. And when they transmit out, the tag has been uh, deleted again. So here, finally, when the uh, v PC2 received the packet, it still has no tag here. So actually, the packet can transmit it correctly using the uh, forward, uh, using the routing uh, and forwarding of the layer 3 devices, the router 1. We use a router's physical interface to connect two different VLANs. However, in that example, actually we use two physical interfaces. Can we reduce the number of interfaces we need? Actually, the answer is yes. We can combine these two interfaces into one interface and combine this two interfaces into one interface. And we only use one cable to connect with the switch one and router one. So the idea will be like this. Uh, here in this 
interface, actually the both VLAN 10 and VLAN 20's packet can go through. So this interface should be in a type of trunk. Okay. And then when the packet arrived to the router, the router here, although they have one physical interface, but we need to separate it into two sub interfaces. So you can think of that as two uh, logical interfaces. So, and they have different uh, sub interface number. So one is dot 10, another is dot 20. And um, also different sub interface will have different IP address here. Okay. And still we set this IP address as the default gateway of VLAN 10's packet. And this IP address as the default gateway of the VLAN 20's gateway. Okay, this is the configuration of this sub interface transmission. Okay, and then let's look at how the packets are forwarded. So actually here you can see that the packets are transmitted from the VLAN 10 in the switch and then go to the outgoing interface, the trunk interface. And then they should be transmitted to the sub interface of the router. But here you can see that actually the packet here has no tag. And when it go, going out, they have the tag because they go through the VLAN 10. And then when they go into the trunk, they also have the tag here. Okay. Then actually in this interface here, actually it will be like this. This is the interface, but they include two sub interface and the packet out of one sub interface should be forwarded to the other sub interface. Okay. And through this sub interface, the packet can be forwarded in the router one until arrive the destination. Here, actually, we have one problem here. So still look at this figure because here in the router, they can only recognize the packet without tags. Okay, so we require the packet here has no tag. However, the packet go from the trunk has the tags on it. So actually before this sub, in, sub interface forward the packet out, they should first delete the tags in the packet to terminate the pack tag. Okay, and then here, when the packet are transmitted out, actually we need to add the tag again so that when it go out of the trunk, they know that for the switch one, they should forward the packet uh, with tag 20 into the VLAN 20. If there is no tag here, the trunk doesn't know which VLAN they should forward the packet to. Okay, so here you can see that in this sub interface, in the sub sub interface 10, they need to delete the tag to terminate the tag. But here in the sub interface 20, they need to add tag to identify which VLAN the packet should forward it to. Okay, so how to implement this? Actually, we need to use the dot one q termination command to do this. So the configuration of this sub interface layer three forwarding actually is as shown in this figure. You can see that we first to uh, configure the interface of the router one. So we go into the sub interface, interface one dot 10. And then when we go into the sub interface, we need to first terminate the tag of the VLAN 10. Okay, so we use the dot one q termination vid 10 to terminate this uh, VLANs to delete the tag from the packets. And we need to allocate the IP address to this sub interface. And this IP address actually needs to be set as the default gateway in the PC1. Okay. And next step is to enable the ARP broadcasting. By default, the ARP broadcast is not enabled in the sub interface. In that case, all the broadcasting packet will not be forwarded out and they will be discarded automatically. So 
to enable the sub-interface to forward the ARP broadcasting packets, we need to use this command, the ARP broadcast enable command, to let the sub-interface can successfully forward the ARP broadcasting packet out. And then for this sub-interface tool, similarly, we also need to use this command which is the dot one q termination vid20. So actually this command, also this command, they have two functions. One function is that when this sub-interface sub receive the packet from VLAN 10, they will uh, delete the tag, allow the packet into it and forward out. And another function is that when they want to send some packet out, they need to add the tag of VLAN 10 or VLAN 20 in the packet and then transmit out. So you can think of this sub-interface as the termination of the uh, VLAN, a special VLAN. Okay, so, and we have bind this sub-interface with certain VLAN. And then we also allocate the IP address to the sub-interface and enable the ARP broadcasting. So in that case, we have binding these sub-interfaces with two different VLANs and they can be successfully transmitted.